right, social family, it's Ed Diaz here again, and today we're going to tackle a subject that I really believe is not really talked about much. Now, the one side of this topic is talked about a ton, which is money, but the other side of the topic is not talked about oh, at all, actually, which is the psychology part of it. So we're going to talk today about the psychology of money, money messages, and I can't think of anybody better than having Marca Bessa of Wealth in Hand. And her background is really interesting, and so I'm just going to pop it off right here and not only thank her for being here today, but we're going to talk a little bit about how she even created this, this company that I really believe is very outside the box. So thank you so much for uh, joining me in this, what I call coffee mayhem, yeah, here right. on, a, on a Tuesday. Cheers. Cheers. Now you have some financial pedigree background <laughs> so a little birdie told me that you had uh, worked with BlackRock tell me a little bit about your background about yourself and how you ended up at BlackRock and and why you left to start <laughs> this because I'm sure a lot of people said what are you nuts you got this huge salary you got this great job you got this major resume enhancer called BlackRock why would you leave something like that so tell us a little bit about you you sound like my husband when I was deciding to leave. <laughs> I actually talked to him yeah. before this. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've been in the wealth management space for about a decade. Um, all really working towards wanting to eventually start my own business. So it was kind of strategic in nature. Oh, from when the beginning I, From then. the beginning, yep. Oh, okay. When I grew up, I had a little book of business ideas, none of which made any sense until I figured out what I enjoyed. <laughs> it's uh, usually how it works. Yeah, right, which is finance. Um, and so... By the time I got to BlackRock, I was there via a small company they acquired called Future Advisor, which is a robo-advisor, and I started there to learn how to run a business um, with a young company that was doing great things, and once they got acquired by BlackRock, it became more of a learn how to do the big stuff and work with this monster of a company that has so many resources. Mm. Um, you know, I thought I was going to be there for six months. I was there for three years. So in my mind, I stayed there a lot longer because I had exactly that voice talking to me for a very yeah, long time. The but little, hey, yeah, hey. Don't forget about that big salary um, and right. all these great people and, and things like that. But eventually, it was time. Um, I had been working towards wanting to start this business. I'm really passionate about teaching, and there are so many people who are less fortunate, who don't know anything about finance, who need somebody to help them understand it. And leaving a salary to go and pursue that was just part of the plan. What was uh, your fear level for on a scale of 1 to 10? I would say probably... A nine to a ten, um, wow. and I and I don't I don't scare easy. Um, one of my biggest fears is being successful, uh, and so it's so funny you say that. Yeah, I have same the thing. same thing, and, and I haven't really mentioned this actually to a lot of people. But believe it or not, that's a pretty prevalent fear. People are afraid of success because of a lot of reasons, but one of them was alienating people that you already know that maybe aren't as quote unquote you know, financially successful. Let's just keep it at that, in that lane. Uh, because success is a green word, I call it. It means different things to different people. Uh, so then you decide, okay, well, I'm just going to do it. Was there a moment in time that was like the, what I call the switch flipper? There's probably two moments in time. Okay. Um, the first one was I finally had mastered the job at Black Rock. And usually when that happens at work, I say, I need to find something else to do. Give me a different job title. That's right. Um, and instead I suppressed that so that I would want to start this business. And I had started to work for free because in the finance industry, um, there are lots of regulations. So I started to, to help and give advice for free. And I did surveys asking, would you pay for this? Because this is a crazy concept for somebody like me to say, is the skill that I am providing and the information I'm providing something you pay for? Because in my mind, it's, this is second nature to me. I, you know, I understand this so well. And so um, I got responses that, yes, yes, I would. And they'd be willing to pay to see me and have them help them. And so I said, you know what? If I can get a couple folks to say, Magda, you're good at this. I love talking to you. I want to do this again and say that they'll pay for it. It's worth the show. Yeah, and I think, you know, to that point, you know, we grow up. And let's, let's just jump into this. We grow up with not so great money messages you know i grew up in an environment where you know you you earn it you cash it you spend it 
And believe me, the velocity of that from the cash it to spend it part is like a drag race. It was so fast that I say, you know what? The money was spent before the ink was dry on that paycheck. And it's unfortunate because a lot of us have grown up with very skewed money messages, including if you did not grow up with money, maybe one of your money messages was that people with money are evil. And people with money don't care about anybody except themselves and about materialism, which that is absolutely not true. There's a lot of incredibly philanthropic, very caring people. Matter of fact, amongst us, there are a lot of very wealthy people that you would never, in a million years, if I put a thousand people in the lineup, you would be able to pick that person up. And I know a few of them that are incredibly wealthy and they're just so down to earth, don't spend a lot of money, they're not into ego, they're not into the, the big flashy thing. And by the way, let me say this as a, as a disclaimer, there's nothing wrong with having nice things. That's the other part, is that there's this there's this sentiment out there that wanting nice things is bad. You should because there's homeless people, there's everything else. No, no, no. The reality is that you can do both. You can have nice things, but also contribute to society. Because at the end of the day, this isn't about us. It's really about our role in other people's lives, if that makes any sense. It's how do we contribute? Because eventually you get to a point where you've made, you've made so much money that now what? You have the watches, you have the cars, you have the houses. Then you realize that really life is about purpose and about how you sow seeds into other people's lives. What kind of money messages have you seen with your clients on that topic that they've grown up with? You know, I usually see two types of folks um, oh, okay. when I'm talking. One is you get folks who are finally making some money and they're so set on not spending anything. Because Fear. they didn't have it. Yep, yeah. they didn't have Fear it. Of loss. They need to catch up. They think they're behind. And the reality is, they might be behind. Um, but sometimes I tell people, you know, you're kind of in good shape. Uh, you you can you can go out to dinner. You can buy <laughs> yourself that outfit that you really like, and that's okay. Don't get carried away. We're not looking to try and swipe the credit card and take on debt that we can't afford. But good every point. once in a while, go ahead. Don't live in fear for buying that latte. Um, and I love those conversations, right? Those are the fun ones when you get to tell people you're doing okay. Would those be the more prevalent or the least? You know, you have to take it into context because um, I, you know, I'm working in the Bay Area. Um, so there's a yeah. lot of folks here who have high incomes, some of which were fortunate enough to not have debt from school, some who are not. Correct. I would say, you know, for folks who seek me out, usually they're already go-getters. 